Tishbab is coming, and I saw a beautiful Midrash Tampuma in the Baram. It's the second to last one. And it gives some insight on the Gullus that we're currently in, the one of Esav and Edom. It's an interesting story from Shmuel, say for Shmuel, where Yoav, the general who worked for King David, basically went over to, to Esav and showed up with the army, brought brought King David's army, and they decided that they were going to kill off all of Esau, all of Edom, over in the land of Seir. Now, in Devarim, in the Parsha Devarim, it says that, that, uh, that Hashem's giving them this particular piece of land at this time. So the emissary from Edom comes out and says, hey, didn't you read the Torah, your own book? It says, first of all, you're not allowed to hate us. It says you're not allowed to hate Esau. He's your brother. And also it says that he's giving you the land. So how can you come in and kill us? And Yoav turns around. Effectively, King David, says Midrash Tanhuma, had this sort of nubua that, hey, this last exile of Esau, where you have all this baseless hatred against Jews. You have pogroms, you have inquisitions. I mean, you have this story in Portugal where they decided to have the inquisition. Every Jewish child under 14, they bring to an island, they abduct and forcibly convert to Christianity. I mean, 200,000 Jews. I mean, it's mind boggling the amount of abuse that Esau and the Christians have mounted onto the Jewish people. Absolutely mind-boggling. And here, David has this idea that, hey, let's just get rid of them. Let's just for, foreshorten it, and let's make sure that there's no last gullus. Brilliant idea. Effectively, Hashem is like, no, 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 no. You have to have, uh, you have to have Esau. Esau is in the story. And not only that, you have the blessing between Yaakov and, and Esau. And Esau, in the blessing, is basically a stick that Hashem uses to beat down the Jews when we're not doing what we're supposed to do. So in the second Yoma, in 9b, it says that the second temple was destroyed for baseless hatred. We know why the first temple was destroyed, for three cardinal sins. But Yoma is saying that the second temple was destroyed for baseless hatred. And in the Sikha, the opening of the explanation of, of uh, Esther in, in the Midrash Rabbah for Esther, Shmuel, the great sage, is saying that, hey, these, are, these exiles are all occurring measure for measure. And because you hated your fellow Jew, I'm putting you into an exile where they're going to have baseless hatred of you. They're going to just hate you, measure for measure. There's a really interesting Midrash Rabbah that talks about returning the mother's bird, uh, the, the, the eggs to the mother's bird nest. It says that it brings you life. And the Midrash Rabbah explains that, that this is actually a way to force, foreshorten the exile, the last exile. And the idea is that with Hashem's mercy, if you're showing mercy on Hashem's creatures, Hashem is going to show mercy on you. And the Midrash explains that really the idea about this mitzvah is to start thinking about your fellow Jew and to have mercy on your fellow Jew. I'm not talking about guys who are sitting there protesting uh, to break Shabbat in Tel Aviv, things like that. I'm talking about guys who... Maybe they read the Shulchan Aruch a little bit differently than you, a little bit differently than you, but they're keeping Torah mitzvot. Maybe they have a different knitted kippah than you. Maybe, maybe they're from, you know, a different area in the world than your family's from. You have to love these people, and you have to treat them with respect. You have to think 
think well of them. You have to to to, to treat them with with care. This this is these are people that are trying to keep Torah and mitzvot. And one of the great ways to care for your fellow Jew is to look for the people that are holding together the Jewish people. These are the Torah scholars. These are the guys that are sitting a full day in a kollel that are learning the word of Hashem, the details and the implications of all of the mitzvot. And the idea is is that is to, to help support them, is to is to find a kollel and to give a little money to, to the kollel to help support these guys who sit and learn. Because this is how the, the real kindness comes. This is what makes sure that the Shekhinah is here with Am Yisrael. You know, the further we get away from Tor and Mitzvot, and the more we go into this dark, long gullis of Esau, the more materialistic it gets. And the more Esau convince us, convinces us to get away from Tor and Mitzvot, the laws, the details, the implications, and convinces us to get away from a spiritual life. And in the bracha that Yitzhak gives to Yaakov uh, and, to, and to Esau, it's really pointing to Esau and saying that, look, this is going to be a very materialistic uh, bracha that you get. And for Yaakov, it's going to be one that's more spiritual. And so the idea of Judaism is to get into a spiritual framework and a spiritual life and to get away from a focus of materialism. Yeah, we live in a material world, and we can use material things to, to, to live here and to, to transform our experience and to, and to make Kiddush Hashem. There's a beautiful Yerushalmi that says that when somebody passes away, that they're going to be asked the question in Shemaim, they're going to say, did you see beautiful fruit? And did you buy it? Did you, did you get it? Did you eat it? Did you enjoy it? And if the person says no, you say, why not? I made it for you. Hashem made it for you to enjoy in this world. So we do things like we say brachas over it. We say brachas after it. We do things not just to have a material life, but to transform that into a spiritual life. And that's why the most important thing that you can do is to invest in yourself and to go to a structured learning program and learn. And also to support guys who sit and learn full-time in a structured learning program because this is the ultimate kindness and love of the Jewish people. This gives some insight on Tisha B'Av and why we have this gullus. And again, it's, it's looking at baseless hatred. And the, and the quickest way to end that is to undo baseless hatred. We have to look at the way we speak. That's intricately connected with baseless hatred. We have to look at where we give our money for charity. Are we giving our money to theaters? Or are we giving our money to what makes us connected as Jewish people, which is a place where people learn Torah? Are we thinking about Torah? Are we living a materialistic life and chasing material instead of living a spiritual life? Are we transforming the world into a world of spirituality? Are we treating our fellow Jew and loving our fellow Jew? Are we loving ourselves? best investment of your time today is to get into the structured learning program and to connect back to the Jewish people and to our traditions. Have a great day. Good Tishbah.